Okay, so for my question, what major question or issue does Elizabeth Ann Holmes's business idea address that merits its study in this class or that merits consideration and discussion in this class? Uh, I stated that the major question that Elizabeth Holmes's business idea addresses is how she grew her company from nothing into a billion dollar company. Her business idea can be justified to be studied in this class because it is a great example of using proper management skills to build and run a business as successful as Theranos Inc. was at the time before its demise. Um, the fall of Holmes' company can also justify consideration to be studied in class as well because it can be a lesson as to what not to do when running a business of that size. My name is Andrea Norman. I had number four and number seven for the group assignment. Number four asks, who are the stakeholders of the Elizabeth Ann Holmes case? And what was their involvement to the case or just their involvement in general? So the first major um, investor was Tim Draper. He invested $1 million. Um, he was a long-term friend of Anne and neighbor, um, and he's one of the people who stood by her her whole trial um, and supported her. Um, another one would be the CEO, the COO of Theranos. Um, his name is Sonny Bolwani. He was faced, um, or he was charged for 13 years for his part in the fraud scandal. Um, he was charged for defrauding Silicon Valley investigators. Um, and so since the trial and sentencing of Elizabeth Ann Holmes, a lot of her employees, which are other stakeholders, um, decided to speak out in the case and state their opinions or things they experienced during their time working for Theranos. Um, and so their involvement would ob obviously be the employment um, and then also a lot of the backlash they were getting for speaking out and the backlash they thought they were going to get from Miss um, Holmes after speaking out. So they dealt with a lot. Um, the Walton family, which um, is famously known for Walmart, also invested $150 million. Um, and so I'm pretty sure, of course, they also received some backlash after the company went down. Uh, they invested that back in 2014. Um, and then also, sorry, I'm getting the one last person. Um, well, I guess after they invested that, that that's when Walgreens went in to just pay Theranos a hundred million. After that, they invested another 40 million. Um, Question five, what challenges, threats, and opportunities are faced by these stakeholders? One of the toughest challenges for a business owner is deciding how to fund your business. The fallout Elizabeth experienced is by making large investments. Companies such as Safeway, Walgreens pulled back from this company. Safeway invested about $350 million into building out clinics and hundreds of their supermarkets. Their partnership followed short before it even offered these services. Also, Walgreens refused to send any lab tests to their company for analysis and suspense due to their California lab that fall to comply with federal standards. Some of the threats that their company received was from CMS. They threatened to ban homes from the laboratory business for two years after their company failed to fix their problems at its lab. It gave the company about 10 days to address the issues and then they revoked their license from operating in the lab. Opportunities. Holmes was the youngest and the wealthiest self-made female billionaire in America with her business valued at $9 billion. Okay, so the next question is what economic, legal, and ethical responses did Elizabeth's company have to their stakeholders? So the economic opportunities Elizabeth received was after when she dropped out of college. She tend to observe the fitness care industry startup, so investors filled her corporation with tens of thousands, thousands of dollars, which made her net worth 
billions of dollars. Legal, she misreporting, addressing the issues, leading to consequences, promoting the corporation's downfall, and then Holmes was charged on prices of fraud. Seven for my, for my questions was, what recommendations do you have for Elizabeth Ann, Elizabeth Ann Holmes? Um, I personally agree with the whole trial um, and everything she was charged with. I believe she should have been charged with. Um, for the record, uh, recommendations after her sentencing and things like that was just to try to learn from her mistakes uh, while she's in prison. Hopefully she comes out, you know, more of an honest person um, and, and yeah, that would be, that would be my recommendation. So for question number eight, the answer to that was personally, I feel like she was wrong. Elizabeth had a great concept and enough knowledge to go about it the correct way. Families were affected due to her undergoing study and went as far as making people believe that there was a hope and chance for the future. In 2018, when problems began to arise, I feel like it was the perfect time to correct any flaws and seek out feedback so that they could go back to the drawing board. All right, question nine. What actions should stakeholders take now? The stakeholders subjugated to business fraud by Elizabeth Ann Holmes should take several actions to protect themselves and seek justice. First, they should report the fraud to appropriate authorities, such as the Secret, the Securities and Exchange Commission or the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Uh, this will help ensure the matter is investigated and that appropriate action is taken against Holmes and any other individuals involved in the fraud. Additionally, stakeholders should consider joining together to file a class action lawsuit against Holmes and her company, Theranos. This would allow them to seek financial compensation for the damages they suffered as a result of the fraud. Finally, Stakeholders should be proactive in protecting themselves from the fu from future fraud by carefully researching any investment opportunities before committing their money. This may include thoroughly vetting any potential investment opportunities. Wait a minute, let me read that again. This may include consulting with financial advisors, reading reports and reviews from trusted sources and thoroughly vetting any potential investment opportunities. By taking these steps, stakeholders can protect themselves and seek justice after being subjugated to business fraud. Do you think Elizabeth Ann Holmes is a visionary fraudster or both? I would personally classify Elizabeth Ann Holmes as both a visionary and a fraudster. After searching the textbook definition of both a visionary and a fraudster, I can confidently claim her to be both. The reason why I, as to why I claim her to be both is because Holmes managed to take her idea, bring it to life, and was able to fool investors despite the inaccuracy of her invention. The definition of a visionary is the act of thinking or planning the future with imagination or wisdom. The fact that she was able to develop strategies to hide the inaccuracy of the blood test proves that she knew exactly which areas of her presentation she had to misdirect the investors. Let's not forget how many attempts it took Holmes for someone to get behind her business idea. She was going to make her idea a reality under any circumstances. Unfortunately for Elizabeth Holmes, her foresight could only go so far as she was unable to foresee the possibility of author John Carreyrou exposing the truth about Theranos. Though that didn't stop Holmes from immediately planning her next business idea and getting the money to make it happen. Let's take a look at the textbook definition of a fraudster. It states that the, that the definition of fraudster is a person who commits fraud, especially in business dealings. Though I do see Elizabeth Ann Holmes as both a fraudster and a visionary, I see her more as a fraudster, simply because she pretended as if her invention was 100% accurate when it wasn't the case. The moment Elizabeth Holmes decided to continue her project despite her awareness of the inaccurate test results, she became a fraudster. Despite Holmes risking the health of a large number of citizens, I find it amazing how she was able to convince enough people 
to invest in her company, especially in the health industry, which I would assume would be real careful about who and or what they invest in, along with 100% certainty that the business idea is safe for everyone. Elizabeth Ann Holmes is a visionary froster of both. Thanos founder and intelligent black turtle neck Elizabeth Holmes was found on four charges of fraud, putting an end to the mid 2000s renaissance of thieves. A jury convicted Holmes guilty on four charges of fraud, including three counts of wire fraud and one count of conspiracy to commit fraud with miscellaneous investors. Holmes left Stanford at the age of 19 to start working on the blood testing startup Theros. Holmes worked. Holmes worked. Developers will recall how she missed. Uh, misled investors into thinking Theros allegedly uh, pertained technology to perform reevaluating blood tests on four counts. She was accused of defending patients who used Theros finger picking tests, who was found not guilty on three counts of desperation. The jury was unable to make a decision. But with this information, I would say she's a froster.